What is up, guys? Carolina Jackpot time coming at you. It is July the 16th, 2022, and it's time for another college football pick and prediction video for the 2022 season. Today, we're doing the Gamecocks SEC East rival, the Kentucky Wildcats. We're going to get into the schedule, the return roster, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about how many games they're going to win, how many games they're going to lose, and what these fans can look forward to in 2022. If you like the video that you're watching, please hit it with a thumbs up and subscribe to the Carolina Jackpot channel. We're going to do college football content here all year long as we have for years and years and years. We need to get some more subscribers, so I really would appreciate it if you become one of them. And um, let's get into talking about 2022 Kentucky. First, before we can get into talking about 22 Kentucky as a outsider, as kind of a, um objective type person um, who's not a fan of Kentucky, let's take a look real quick at what some people had to say on Twitter about Phil Steele's prediction. You all know Phil Steele, right? We all know Phil Steele. He's the one who puts this old magazine out every year. We love it, right? The college football uh, preview. He's been doing it since 1995. Rocking it strong, putting in the work all year long. This guy uh, busts his balls um, 24-7, 365, and that is no damn joke. Uh, but um, they didn't like what he had to say about Kentucky and uh, their ranking, uh, as far as it goes in his power index, uh, versus their in-state rivals, the Louisville Cardinals. Take a look at these tweets real quick. <laughs> All right, my man said he's going to stop buying the magazine. He's been buying it for 20 years. But he's going to stop, stop dropping his dimes on this magazine because Phil Steele predicted... Uh, that Louisville would have a better season in Kentucky. Brother, get a grip of yourself, okay? Uh, and guess what? Nobody believes you. Uh, you've been dropping uh, you've been dropping cash on that thing of lying every year for 20 years. You ain't going to stop doing it just because he picked Louisville ahead of you. Come on, man. How many years in the past 20 has Louisville been better than you? At least half the time, right? Come on, bro. Quit being dumb. Let's get into 2022 Kentucky Wildcats uh preview video now if you've been a long time subscriber to carolina jackpot if you've been rocking it with me the long way the long way like you should be you'll remember that back in 2021 i did a season preview video on the kentucky wildcats as well let's take a look back real quick at what i had to say and where i thought they would finish up and uh let's see how i ended up with my prediction looking back real quick on the 2021 kentucky preview video done by carolina jackpot last july i had you finishing up the regular season at eight and four you actually finished it up at nine and three so one game better than i predicted and honestly i'm not here to toot my own horn but toot toot I predicted correctly uh, a home upset win over LSU. You did win that game. Not necessarily uh, that it was an upset when it happened. Uh, I picked you to lose on the road at Mississippi State. You did. I picked you to lose at home to Tennessee. You did. Uh, I think those were all games that, uh, you know, folks thought could have gone either way. And uh, Jackpot nailed them. The only one that Jackpot did not nail was the home win against Florida. And uh, I don't think that any of us knew that Dan Mullen was as terrible of a coach as he was uh, coming out of 2020 going into 2021. Uh, it seemed like the sky was the limit for these people, but uh, obviously, uh, yeah, it didn't quite happen, did it? Ta-da! So things have changed a little bit. I had to carry the video over to the next day, so the appearance is just a little bit different. I got my sunglasses checked. I got my Gatorade checked. And I got my notes. I took check. So let's get into 2022 Kentucky talking about this team. You're 10 and three last year, <clears throat> nine and three in regular season. You beat Iowa in the Citrus Bowl, 20 to 17. Uh, they're actually ranked higher than you, which you came into the game as a favorite. You're eight and four last year in the regular season against the spread, which is pretty good. Last year recruiting classes in 2019, you finished up number 34. 2020, you finished up number 25. In 2021, dipped down a little bit, number 35. 
And then in 2022, uh, Mark Stoops landed a f number 14 uh, class uh, with 11 four stars. So uh, pretty good job there. Uh, some of those people uh, may make an impact uh, this year. We'll see. 2023, uh, you're ranked uh, number 47 currently. Um, that's kind of early though. You're, you only have 12 commitments so far in this class, but if you look at a lot of the teams in front of you, uh, your players actually have a higher average star ranking than some of those um, that are in front of you. And I know what people say, well, stars don't matter when you, well, I mean, it does. I mean, Stoops has proven over the years that he can, uh, recruit these players and they've taken these players who weren't necessarily that highly regarded who weren't in the top 300 uh, who w didn't have high star rankings and turned them into really good players now uh you're starting to get some people with you know uh elevated star potential and you know nine times out of ten these people are probably going to pan out into something or th that might be a little bit high i would say at least seven times out of ten Seven times out of ten, I don't I don't know what the percentage is. You take a uh, five star out of high school, he's gonna uh, make an NFL roster, but uh, it's pretty good. It, it's a lot better than for a three star. Okay, let's just put it that way. Uh, coming back, you got quarterback Will Levis. Um, <clears throat> Sixty six percent of his passes last year, twenty eight hundred twenty six yards. Uh, 24 TDs and 13 interceptions. That's uh, not real good. <clears throat> I didn't realize he'd thrown that many picks. Um, 217 yards per game, which seems kind of low to me, but uh, those are the numbers. He either f had a feast or a famine last year uh, in, in their games. If you want to like uh, compare him to somebody else in the SEC, it's SEC quarterback uh, Bryce Young, Alabama. He threw for 4,739 yards, almost 2,000 more than Levis. However, his size and his arm strength make him a uh, legit uh, NFL uh, first-round draft prospect. And you do lose your offensive coordinator, Liam Cohen. Uh, he only spent one year at Kentucky. He came from uh, the L.A. Rams. He took another NFL job, and in comes uh, offensive coordinator Rich Scangarello. I think I'm saying that right. He was the San Francisco 49ers quarterback coach. Uh, so, you know, who, you know who their quarterback is, and uh, he sucks. So I, I don't really know, uh, you know, what Mr. Scangarello is going to do differently uh, from what Liam Cohen did, um, but... You know, if, if he continues doing the same things they were doing, they'll be just fine uh, in, in you know the quarterback game and that part of the uh, part of the offense. We're good last year, but you're kind of inconsistent. Bo Allen, who was kind of a highly touted freshman, uh, is a redshirt freshman now, and he'll be the backup <clears throat> again this year. I saw very limited action last year. Running back position, the strength of your team. Uh, Chris Rodriguez, uh, he is um, a senior. 225 carries last year, 1,392 yards. He's the SEC's leading returning rusher and nine touchdowns and 6.1 yards uh, per carry. <clears throat> As you know, on uh, Mother's Day, uh, Rodriguez uh, was um, arrested by campus police at Kentucky for uh, DUI. Um, so he's going to miss, uh, he's going to miss some games. I, I, I don't know how many, I don't think that's been determined yet. Uh, we don't know which ones he's going to miss. I, I would think probably the first three games, maybe if I'm a, a betting man, I, I'm, I don't know. I mean, you can't, you can't hold him out and we'll look at their schedule soon, uh, but you can't hold him out of the, of the opening game, uh, against Miami of Ohio and then uh, allow him to play against Florida and then, uh, sit him against uh, Youngstown State and um, whoever your next opponent is after that. That's just, I mean, you, you, that's just something you just don't do. Um, that makes you look bad. So Rodriguez is going to be out. And, you know, God made a bad decision. But let's face it, everybody who's been in college, uh, everybody who's been young has made those dumb decisions before. And if you're watching this video, uh, odds are that you may have done that in the past. You know, yourself, you just didn't get caught. So we're not going to judge him on that. How is that that I'm doing a video on Kentucky and I got blue Gatorade? That's not, that's coincidence. Cavassier Smoke will back him up. <coughs> that seems like this guy 
was there when uh, Hal Mummy was coaching the team. Uh, he seems like forever. 81 carries, 429 yards last year, four touchdowns, 5.1 yards uh, a carry. It says he's a junior. Huh? Um, and this guy has had a lot of injury problems in his career. Uh, so he's never really, I don't think, realized his full potential. Uh, and then being Rodriguez's backup, maybe, you know, in the first few games of the season, if Rodriguez is suspended, maybe Cabastier Smoke um, can show uh, us a little bit of what he's got there. Um, Receiver-wise, this may be an issue. Uh, for Kentucky, you lost Wondell Robinson, who um, set school records last year for receiving yards uh, and uh, receptions. Uh, came over from Nebraska. You got him out of the transfer portal. Uh, he was a huge get for Kentucky. Oh, God. I have to take those off, guys. Excuse me. I am sweating like a uh, like a pig out here, man. It is so humid in South Carolina today. It's unreal. We also lose Josh Ali, uh, who's an, uh, another kid who'd been there for a good while. Uh, transfers in uh, Travian, Robinson, Travian Robertson from uh, Virginia Tech who uh, did a pretty solid job there. Uh, also, Isaiah Cummings. He don't spell it like Isaiah in the Bible. This is I-Z-A-Y-A-H. So he's your only production that you have returning to the team uh, of any uh, you know, significant amount, three touchdowns last year. This is definitely a question mark for Kentucky going into the season. Uh, and, you know, with the big arm quarterback, Levis, uh, you, you know, you're gonna, he's going to need these guys to develop quick. Uh, into playmakers. You also lost your tight end, uh, Rig, I think was his name. Uh, but you do have uh, another big kid coming in at tight end. We'll see how that works out. Offensive line, uh, you're losing your right tackle, who's an All-American, uh, Darian Kennard. Um, you also lose Luke Fortner, a center, who was an All-SEC player, and Dane Rosenthal, a guy who transferred in from LSU, who was an uh, impact player last year as well. You also bring in a new offensive line coach. Uh, you lost your uh, offensive line coach, uh, Eric Wolford, uh, who was there for one year. He used to be the Gamecocks offensive line coach. Uh, he's now the coach at Alabama on the offensive line. So that's going to be a question mark for Kentucky as well. However, Kentucky's usually pretty solid on the lines of scrimmage. I think that Stoops and his crew will get this unit developed at some point earlier in the season they're not gonna this is not gonna be a taffy swiss cheese uh south Carolina gamecocks type offensive line from 2021 i, I still think uh that there's talent there and i think you, that you got some good coaching there so i think this group will be okay in time it just may be a rocky go at the beginning <clears throat> however your schedule is kind of softer at the beginning so that's a good thing uh, five starters return on the defense. Your defensive line, in fact, your front seven is very solid. Uh, the linebacker core uh, is the uh, amongst the best in the SEC. Uh, number one tackler return is Jacquez Jones. Uh, I believe that he uh, transferred from Ole Miss last year, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And your number three tackler, DeAndre Squizza, uh also returns there. Uh, on the defensive backside, um, you know, you, you got some attrition there. Uh, you lost Yusef Corker, popped the top on that one. Uh, but you do add in um, a transfer from Ole Miss and uh, a kid from Texas State. Uh, you also return uh, cornerback uh, Carrington Valentine. I think I watched a soap opera with him in it one time. Carrington Valentine. Defensive coordinator Brad White. Uh, pretty solid. This is his third year there. Stoops is a solid defensive mind as well. I think this unit will be okay. I don't think it's going to be as good uh, as it has been in the past, uh, but I think it will develop into a decent unit over time during the season. Uh, your special teams, again, solid. Uh, place kicker Matt Ruffalo. Uh, this is another guy. Seemed like he's been there since Howell Mummy coached. Uh, 10 of 13 last year on field goals. Long was 45. He did miss two extra points, though. Can't really be doing that. And uh, your punter, Colin Goodfellow, 40-yard uh, average. Uh, so this guy is a bit of a weapon. He can flip the field for you a little bit when uh, that offense bogs down. And with those uh, problems at wide receiver, um, you know, with uh, the DUI issues with Rodriguez, that offense may bog down a little bit 
early in the season. So we will see uh, what happens there. Now, let's get into what you really came here for, the game-by-game -game predictions. Let's throw the 2022 slate up there and dive right into it. We're going to pick the wins. We're going to pick the losses. There is no gray area here on the Carolina Jackpot channel. You're either winning them or you're losing them because guess what? Ties don't exist anymore. You open up on September 3rd with Miami of Ohio at home. The Red Hawks are um, a Mac East contender. They have a solid quarterback, had a lot of attrition on the defensive side of the football. Um, I don't think that this is going to be an easy game by any means, but I do think Kentucky gets the win here. Um, this team almost beat Minnesota last year. Um, so it, it's not going to be uh, a cakewalk to open the season up, but I think Kentucky gets the win. You go 1-0. Uh, talk real quick about your non-conference schedule. You people um, are the only, and I mean you're the only team in the SEC who um, has your main rival that's not an SEC team that you play every year, but you play no other uh, Power Five teams ever. Now, I know my South Carolina Gamecocks are not playing one this year. However, uh, Clemson, uh, the normal uh, rival, which we play every year, obviously, another Power Five team, and South Carolina will play uh, a Power Five team. You know, they'll throw North Carolina in there about every other year. We've had NC State in there. Uh, we're going and playing Virginia Tech, and I mean, I just don't understand the deal with Kentucky. You haven't played a Power Five team outside the SEC other than uh, – Louisville since like 2002, 2003, and it was Indiana. So, you know, I mean, I don't understand this. I mean, I'm not saying you got to do it every year, but hell, I mean, I'd like to see some Kentucky versus West Virginia every once in a while. Give me some Kentucky versus Virginia Tech. Give me some Kentucky versus Virginia. Uh, you know, some of those regional teams there. Give me a, a Kentucky versus North Carolina or a North Carolina State. Uh, you know, not too far away. That's a place people could travel to, right? Uh, I think it would be a good game. I, I just don't understand the scheduling logic. I have a lot of things are fixing to change with SEC schedules soon anyway. So, uh, just going – hell, but schedule Indiana some more. I mean, they're a Power 5 team, probably somebody you could beat. You're on the road at Florida the next week. Uh, Anthony Richardson uh, takes over at quarterback for uh, Billy Napier's team, um, taking over uh, the mess that Dan Mullen left there uh, at the end of the season. Uh, Al, but did he? I mean, I, I don't know if, you know, I don't think the team was so much in shambles other than they just really didn't like play with this guy. Uh, I think that Florida is still pretty talented. Uh, I think that they still have a good core nucleus there. I think Richardson can be a good quarterback and can develop into a playmaker for them. And um, I, I'm, this is a game in the swamp. Um, they play Utah in week one. Uh, I happen to think Utah is probably going to go down there and beat them. So, you know, I don't think Florida starts off 0-2. I think Florida beats you. Uh, you don't have a very good history in Gainesville. You have won there, th and you play Florida every year. You have won in Gainesville three times since 1956. That is unbelievable. And two of those were in 1977 and 1979. In 1979, Florida won a damn game. Um, so I think Florida may be in wounded animal mode here. I think they pick up the win. I'm sorry, you dropped to one and one. Uh, the next week, you take on Youngstown State. Um, this is a FCS team. It was three and seven last year. They have been good in the past, uh, but they they've just kind of struggled a bit. Uh, I think you pick up an easy win there at home over the Penguins. Um, your next game is um, at home against Northern Illinois. Uh, I found it kind of strange this is the first time that kentucky and northern illinois had ever met and i'm not making fun of you scheduling mac teams i just think that it's kind of strange it's the first time y'all have ever played it seems like y'all played a lot of uh mac teams so um with that being said uh they won the conference in 2021 uh, and they got back 18 returning starters uh this team went 0-6 in 2020 during the covid year crazy that they made that big of a turnaround it had to be the most improved program in the country um 
they lost uh, in their bowl game to Coastal Carolina. Close game. It was like 47-41 uh, in the Cure Bowl. Uh, yeah, their quarterback, Rocky uh, Lombardi, uh, is a pretty decent quarterback. They'll be coming off of a home game uh at Vander or a home game against Vanderbilt, uh, which I kind of expect them to win. Can they roll into Lexington and pick up a win against you guys? No, I don't think they do. I think you have a little bit too much for Northern Illinois. I think this game is going to be closer than the game one against Miami of Ohio. Uh, you know, these MAC teams that you scheduled, I, I got to give you props. They are good MAC teams. I think you picked the win up here. Part of me wanted to give you a loss, and, and it's not to besmirch Kentucky in any way, but uh, from just if you keep on scheduling, 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 teams, eventually you're going to uh, step on your own, and uh, this could definitely be the time. But for the, the sake of argument, I gave Kentucky the win here. You're three and one. Next week, uh, you're on the road at Ole Miss. Uh, you have not been to Oxford since 2010, so you take home Lane Kiffin's bunch here. Uh, Ole Miss loses their quarterback, uh, Beach Bum, I like to call him, Matt Corral. Uh, they bring in uh, Jackson Dart, a kid who transferred in from uh, USC Junior, and Luke Atmeyer, uh, who is uh, what, a freshman there. They also uh, bring in from the transfer portal uh, Zach Evans, a uh, guy who had seven yards of carry last year from TCU. So they're going to be solid there. Uh, and they also add Ulysses Bentley, 1,600 yards in three years at SMU uh, running the football. So, you know, Ole Miss, you always think about Lane Kiffin and them airing the ball out, throwing the ball all over the yard, the Frisbee catching dogs, jumping out of the air, cutting flips and making catches. But they always have a solid run game. excuse me, to set up that passing game. And despite some attrition, uh, I think they'll be just fine at the running back position with these transfers. Uh, they have a solid offensive line. They add in a transfer tight end there in Michael Trigg, who also came from USC Junior. And uh, the thing is, they have a very weak schedule before Kentucky comes uh, to Oxford. Uh, I think you lose this one. I think you drop this one and you go to three and two uh, on the season. Um, you know, I just uh, I just don't see you being able to go down there uh, and pick up a win. The next game uh, at home against the South Carolina Gamecocks and um, uh, South Carolina, of course, we all know uh, lost the last four games in Lexington. Uh, Shane Beamer takes on Kentucky for the second time uh, last year. Uh, you won the game sixteen to ten. Um, score really not indicative of uh how it, the game to me felt a little bit one-sided uh south carolina's offense did not play particularly well in that game uh, in fact i uh, did a video at halftime of that game uh known in by in small circles as uh did will muschamp ever leave columbia i may drop it down in the description box below if i remember um but uh coming off this loss here the Gamecocks are coming off of two uh, relatively soft games against Charlotte and South Carolina State. Um, to me, this game is going to be all, it's going to be a matter of pride for South Carolina. Um, you know, we've got to turn the corner at some point and start punching Kentucky in the mouth and start punching Mizzou in the mouth. And I think that Shane Beamer and uh, staff and these players have this game circled. Um, I just think it means more to South Carolina to go up there and get a win uh, than it does to Kentucky. Uh, have not historically played well in Lexington, but, you know, what better time than with a new coach rolling in? What better time to change that? I think Spencer Rattler uh, throwing the ball around is going to be a little bit too much for a questionable secondary. Um, I think South Carolina's uh, offensive line is going to play much better. Uh South Carolina's defensive line uh, is, is very talented and capable. They have not played up to uh, their uh, potential, uh, in my opinion, uh, especially last year. Uh, didn't look good a lot. Weak offensive line at Kentucky. Not necessarily weak, but like I said, it's going to be a development process. This is still relatively early in the season. 
I think the Gamecocks beat you. I think you dropped to three and three uh, after this loss. Uh, I'm sorry. You can call me a homer. You can sit here and hurl whatever insult you want my way. I can take it. That's just fine because I also brought thick skin check. But uh, South Carolina beats Kentucky here. Uh, you dropped to three and three. Good news is next week you're at home. I think that you uh, that you uh, are are in wounded animal mode and i think you beat mississippi state uh they have a lot of returning production off of a team that gassed you last year i think the crowd's going to be pumped for this game uh i expect uh kentucky to play well here um and i expect that offensive line to kind of start gelling a little bit by this time i expect um the defense to play much better uh, this is another game that is a point of pride for you uh, after they kind of punched you in the face last year. I think that you beat Mississippi State and you improved to four and three. Next week, uh, you're off. So you've got a bye week and it couldn't come in a better time. You've had a couple of tough losses uh, in the SEC, but you followed it up with a win. Uh, and then next week, you're on the road at Tennessee, uh, your arch rivals. Um, Tennessee has Georgia the next week. Are they going to be looking ahead to Georgia? Who knows? They could be 6-1 and one coming into this game. Uh, it's very possible. Um, I think that they could beat everyone on their schedule with the exception of Alabama by this point. Um, I, I just don't think that, that beating them is possible this year. Um, they may push them a little bit, but Alabama is going to be very solid uh, in 2022, much more so than they were in 2021. Uh, the visitor in this game has won the last three, uh, but Tennessee has generally um, had the upper hand in this series since its inception. And, you know, last year was an offensive shootout. You know, you don't have the receiving talent this year. Tennessee does. Uh, that offense is going to score some points. Are you going to be able to stop them on the road? I, I think it's going to be just a little bit too much. Uh, I think you drop this game to Tennessee uh, again, and honestly, I mean, I think you lose this one by double digits. I, you know, I just hate to say it, but uh, that that's true. Four and four is your record there. The next week, you go on the road. Uh, you take on Mizzou, uh, a team that you've won four of the last five against. Uh, I think you get a win there. Uh, Mizzou will be coming off of a game on the road at my Gamecocks. Uh, they're kind of an unknown going into 2022. Got a new quarterback taking over in Brady Cook who's had some limited duty. Uh, they have a five-star stud wide receiver um, in Luther Burton uh, coming in uh, from the St. Louis area. Uh, and uh, the guy from uh, from Ohio State, I can't remember his name at this point. He's good, too. Um, they got to figure out the running back position. Uh, I'll know his name by the end of this video. In fact, I have this magazine here. Why don't I just look it up real quick so I don't look stupid. Um, that would be uh, Mookie Cooper. Yeah, I had his name on the my tongue. So I really don't know what, what they're going to be able to do. They bring in a new defensive coordinator, too, and they needed to. Uh, that Steve Wilkes guy that was there was that from the NFL was absolutely horrible. They bring in Blake Baker, a guy who was a D.C. at Miami from 2019-2020. Under Mandy Diaz, I think Manny, not Mandy, it's not a girl. <laughs> I think Mizzou could be a surprise team this year, but, you know, just looking at this thing um, objectively and not knowing what the future holds, I think Kentucky gets the win here. Uh, so you improve there to, uh, to five and four. I think you go to six and four the next week uh, at home against Vanderbilt. Uh, Vanderbilt's covered against you the last two years, but they have not won an SEC game since 2019. Um, this comes off of uh, a game against the Gamecocks at home. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> hell, honestly, Vanderbilt could win that game. I think last year, um, <laughs> you know, they played pretty well against South Carolina. They pushed us. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen, but they're going to beat an SEC team at some point. And uh, I just hope it's not us. But I think you get the win against Vanderbilt. I don't really think that they have uh, what it takes to go into Lexington and pull off an upset victory. Uh, the next week, uh, you're at home uh, against Georgia. Uh, Georgia, I think, is uh, vastly overrated, especially defensively this year. I think they're going to struggle on defense, especially early. 
Uh, their schedule soft early, though. Um, games against Oregon, Samford, uh, my Gamecocks. I'm sorry, I got to lump them in there as being kind of a softer opponent. Uh, Kentucky, or not, not Kentucky, I'm sorry, Kent, uh, Mizzou, and uh, Auburn and Vanderbilt. And that, that's who they open up with. You know, so, uh, yeah, I think they could run through that thing uh, without a loss. But I still don't think they're going to be anywhere near the level of the 2021 team. They've had a lot of great recruiting classes. Uh, Eric Gilbert, uh, who's a, uh, you know, the 2020 sensation from uh, from LSU, will be playing tight end. Looks like they've moved Lad McHonkey over to wide receiver now. Um, you know, running back wise, you know, everybody talks about George, George is loaded at running back or loaded, uh, you know, they got, you know, they're going to have 2000 yard rushers. You really don't have a whole lot, uh, in the running back room this year. Um, so, but in the end here, still, uh, talent wins out. Uh, I don't expect to see uh, a real high scoring game here, but I do think Georgia picks up the win. Uh, unfortunately for you drop to six and five. Your final game of the season, uh, you take on Louisville. <sighs> I'm giving you the win against Louisville. I don't care what Phil Steele said. I still think you beat them. If you look down the stretch, they're without a bye week. They're coming off games against Pitt, uh, Wake Forest, uh, James Madison, which won't be too tough, NC State, Clemson, and Clemson on the road. That's the meat of their schedule. Uh, Malik Cunningham is a dynamic athlete. He can throw the ball uh, around a good bit, but he's better with his feet. Is he going to be healthy for this game? He's had uh, a lot of injury issues in the past. We'll see. Uh, Tyon Evans going to be their running back. This guy uh, was pretty good at Tennessee last year. Uh, he, uh, I think, had some academic issues, hit the transfer portal, ended up at uh, Louisville. Uh, you know, some, you know, you, you've beaten this team every year since 2017. They've all been blowouts. Just looking at them, I mean, with, with knowing what they've got to face before they faced you, I, I got to go against Phil Steele and give Kentucky the win in this game. So I think you finish up the season with a 7-5 and five record. Uh, not what you want, I know, but defensively, I think you're going to struggle a little bit. I think you're also going to struggle a little bit without Rodriguez in the lineup. I don't know that that's going to have a real effect on the one-loss record because you do play your softer competition at the beginning of the year. But, I mean, really, are they that soft? I think, um, you know, even though I besmirch your scheduling a little bit of non-Power 5 opponents, these are pretty formidable non-Power 5 opponents for Kentucky. Uh, when you look back at last year, uh, you struggled with the snake uh, at home. Barely beat them. So drop down in the comment section below. Tell me what you think Kentucky's record will be in 2022. Am I dead on? Do you think they'll be worse? You think they'll be 6-6 six and six or possibly 5-7? and seven? Do you think Kentucky wins 8 or 9 games? Uh, let me know. I'll see you guys later. I appreciate it. Peace, and I'm out of here.